Welcome to First United Methodist Church, Marble Falls. I'm Pastor Tommy Tucker. Our worship service is coming to you via the internet at FUMC Marble Falls and our FUMC MF Facebook page. These are very unusual circumstances and trying times, so we hope that you will bear with us as we, as we present this, our, our first ever pre-recorded worship service. This morning with us, of course, are Pastor Ellen and Pastor Clay, and uh, our children's director, Stephanie DeVault, and, and our youth director, uh, uh, Grayson, is also here this morning. And we're joined by our praise music leader, George Gurganis, and uh, especially by Blair Hambrick.
that I look to I won't be overwhelmed Give me vision To see things like you do God, I look to you You're where my help comes from Give me wisdom You know just what to do yeah. God, I look to you I won't be overwhelmed Give me vision See things like you do, God. I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do. And I. God, I look to you, I won't be overwhelmed Give me vision to see things like you do God, I look to you, you're where my help comes from Give me wisdom, you know just what to do God, that's just a prayer of our hearts this morning, um, that, uh, that we won't be overwhelmed, that you are in control, Lord, we just, we love you for that, that even in, in the midst of our chaos, that it's, it's not chaotic to you, that, uh, that you are absolutely in control, uh, you're victorious in these situations, Lord, and uh, thank you for being with us as we, as we go through, um, go through these days that are very trying and, and very, uh, it's overwhelming for us, Lord. We love you so much, Father. heart is under fire and 
Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I'll never be alone There was another in the fire Standing next to me There was another in the waters Holding back the sea And should I ever need reminding Of how I've been set free There is a cross that bears the burdens Where another died for me There is another in the fire All my dead left for dead beneath the waters And I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore And should I fall in the space between What remains of me and this reckoning Either way I won't bow to the things of this world And I know I'll never be alone there is another in the fire Standing next to me There is another in the waters Holding back the sea And should I ever need reminding The power set me free There is a grave that holds nobody Now that power lives in me There is another in the fire another in the fire oh there is another in the fire oh there is another in the fire oh and I can see the light in the darkness as the darkness bows to him and I can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between we're thin and I can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prison walls cave in nothing stands between us nothing stands between us name but the name that is Jesus he who was and still is and will be through it all so come with me in the space between all these things unseen and this reckoning no I'll never be alone Lord I know I'll never be alone there be another in the fire standing next to me there be another in the waters holding back the sea and should I ever need reminded how good it been to me I count the joy come every battle cause I know that's where you'll be and I can see the light in the darkness as the darkness bows to him and I can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between we're thin and I can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prison walls cave in nothing stands between us nothing stands between us there'll be another in the fire standing next to me there'll be another in the waters Holding back the sea And should I ever need reminding How good you've been to me I count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be I count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be I count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be Amen. Thank you. Good morning, church. Let us go to God in prayer. 
Gracious and mighty God, we thank you so much that you are with us today. That you were very powerfully present, not just in this room, but in the home of every member of this church. Thank you, O oh God, for the opportunities you give us right now that are very unique to reach out to others in love, to extend our support and our love, our concern, our compassion. Oh God, thank you for the opportunities you give us to pray. We always should pray, but somehow at this time, it seems so much more appropriate as we pray very intentionally for those who are cut off from family members because they're in nursing homes, rehab facilities, hospitals, prisons, jails. As every institutional facility right now of any kind is on lockdown. But Lord, we know before the locks didn't keep you out and the locks don't keep you out today. We thank you for that, O oh God, that no, lock, no locked door can close out your spirit and your love. We pray for our first responders who are literally first in the line of fire with this virus. We ask, O oh God, that you put a hedge of protection around them as they go into homes unsure, as they go into car wrecks uncertain as they reach out, as those in hospitals that work to help people save lives. Precautions that are unprecedented for this virus. Be with them, O oh God, and protect them. And Lord, let us not be so consumed and caught up with this virus that we forget that you are present with us. And that you are bigger than anything else. That you are bigger than anything that seeks to come against us, whether it's a virus or a war or a plague. And that nothing is bigger than your healing power. And now, God, we pause and lift up things that are on our hearts this morning. God, we pray for all of those who've lost their jobs in this time. And specifically the 400 people who've been let go down at Horseshoe Bay. Father, we pray, pray especially for Mark Webb this morning, uh, this evening, this afternoon, for this whole day because of the oral surgery that he mm -hmm. had. Father, it went very well, but he's still in, in much pain. We pray for Phyllis Hyman as she continues to struggle just getting back to normal, God. Uh, we give thanks that she is beginning to breathe on her own, but we know the recovery is still continuing. Father, Kent Gottfriedson requests prayers for his daughter, Cynthia, who's in the hospital with a broken hip and will need surgery. And we lift her up to you at this special time. God, we pray for San Saba as if everything going on wasn't enough, they've lost their grocery store and their dining places have been called in or been asked not to serve. Uh, for those who are not prepared for those to eat and those dependent on those places for food, uh, we got it. We ask you provide a quick, safe place so that no longer becomes a food desert. Yes. Lord, we, we pray for our brother Larry Hamlin and the procedures that he's had to undergo in his throat and chest these last few days and pray that as he recovers now, he will be back joining us, Father, and that we just lift up his recovery and his healing to you. God, we pray for Terry Hunter as she continues to recover um, from her COPD and other complications. Father, we pray for Janice Collier's son-in-law, Steve Hansen, as he has been released rather from rehab but still has a, a long way to go to recuperate. We pray for Randy and Kathy Savage as they await uh, determination on what to do with their treatments among this pandemic. And we pray for uh, Harry Melton, Father, for he is in, in uh, a rehab facility, uh, and we understand he's doing better, but we lift him up to you, Father, to, to sustain him through this time 
especially when visitors aren't allowed and uh, or at least so much and that that father that he would get well enough to be able to be released god we uh, pray for teresa she waits results of her biopsy and also we pray for the new family member in that family addison and the celebration that that life brings continue to be with her and her mother as she recovers and we also want to pray for someone else in that family lucia and she is waiting knee surgery gracious god we're very thankful that bev slay has been able to uh, go home from uh, vibra and uh, is out of rehab and is recuperating at home and just ask a continued blessing on her healing god we pray for dan uh wiser as he uh, suffers from fever for the last couple days and for all heavenly father that that we may not know about by name but you know and you know their their loneliness this morning you know their sorrow and you know father their pain that they're in and we just lift each and every one of your precious sons and daughters up to you and i specifically we want to pray for uh, june saint um, as she deals with the loss of her brother Ralph and um, pray for everyone who loses someone in this time of pandemic in which uh, the usual grieving process of funeral and celebration of lives become extremely problematic. God, be with families as we learn new ways to mourn. In Jesus' name, let's end our prayer by saying the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Miss Stephanie, are you going to come and talk to us and talk to the children who are at home watching this? Hello, thank you. Hey friends, it seems sort of strange to be joining you via digital connection. It's different, but I think it might be okay. These times are a bit confusing. They're maybe even a bit stressful, and I'm sure to many just very uncertain. But I kind of think there's like an opportunity and a gift in all of this that we've been given, and that's like kind of a gift of time and a, a gift of connection. So my question to you, friends, would be, what do you love to do? What kind of things do you enjoy? Do you like to go for walks or maybe go bike riding or play board games or maybe make forts or do Legos or cook or bake there's so many things that we really have an opportunity that god has given us time and connection i would really hope friends that you would connect with your families during this time your mom your dad your brothers your sisters maybe aunts and uncles the people that you are with the most and families i would encourage you to reach out and just spend that time with your children mm -hmm. use this as an opportunity as a gift and not as a place of Fear. I think we need to be responsible and educated and smart, but I also think that this is really a time that God has really blessed us with as far as like the gift of connection and the gift of memories and things that can really last a lifetime. This, this will pass at some point, but the memories that you can make right now in this time could last a lifetime. Your kids could be talking about this yes. at 80, 90, 100. And we really just need to band together in this time and love one another and be there for one another and connect with each other. This is, this, it, I know it can be hard families when you're just all day and we're on spring break and we have another week coming up extended and i know y'all have a lot on your minds and hearts but let your kids fill you and fill your kids and i think we're going to all be okay in all of this and i just want to lead us in prayer and just we sure do miss you church and we sure do miss you friends and we wish we were with you but we we know that we'll get to see you soon dear heavenly father we just come before you today and we just thank you lord that even though there's so much upheaval happening around us the best gift that you are giving us is the gift of time, gift of connection, and just an opportunity to really grow and love each other a little bit more. 
Lord, we just pray that um, all the kids uh, would have an opportunity to just enjoy the things they love, but to get to do it aside their parents or their parents aside their children. Lord, we just love you, and we're so thankful that in this time you still continuously give us these little gifts that we can focus on. In Jesus' name, amen. Yay, Jesus! Uh, church, we would like to remind you that there are still um, opportunities to give, even though we're not passing a plate in a building. You can give through the U.S. Postal Service, driving up and placing your offering in our secure mailbox, or using our online giving options. But not only supporting our local church, in the Methodist Church, we have special Sundays with opportunities to give. Uh, this Sunday is the chance to give to United Methodists Committee of Emergency Relief, or UMCOR. UMCOR helped us when we've had the flood. UMCOR helped the people in Nashville during the tornado. And whenever a disaster occurs, whenever you give to UMCOR, 100% of the funds go to those who are in the disaster. But the way that they're able to do that is by having every Methodist church one Sunday a year take up an offering to cover the administrative costs. And that's what's going on this Sunday. If you feel called to give and continue to support this ministry so that every chance a disaster comes, everyone can give knowing that 100% of the effort goes to relief, please mark that specifically as you give your giving options. Once again, those are through the U.S. Postal Service, driving up and placing in our secure, secure mailbox, or of course, our online giving. Our scripture reading comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, the seventh chapter, verses 1 through 10. It's entitled, Jesus Heals a Centurion's Servant. After Jesus had finished all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. A centurion there had a slave whom he valued highly and who was ill and close to death. When he heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders to him, asking him to come and heal his slave. When they came to Jesus, they appealed to him earnestly, saying, He is worthy of having you do this for him, for he loves our people, and it is he who has built our synagogue for us. And Jesus went with them. But when he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you under my roof. Therefore, I do not presume to come to you, but only speak the word and let my servant be healed. For I also am a man set under authority with soldiers under me, and I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my slave, do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him, and he turned to the crowd that followed him, and he said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. When those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Given up his life, 
the darkest day in history They're on a cross they made for sinners For every curse is blood atoned One final breath and it is finished not the end we could have known For the earth began to shake And the veil was torn What sacrifice was made As the heavens rose of light breaking through When all was lost he crossed eternity The king of life was on the move For in a cold dark tomb Where our Lord was laid One miraculous breath and we're forever changed Oh, hail King Jesus Oh, hail the Lord of heaven and earth Oh, hail King Jesus Oh, again let me ask you let us go to God in prayer gracious and loving God we thank you for this day for the many ways that you 
come to us, to comfort us, to strengthen us at this time. Lord, I ask that especially during this time, you will help us to open your word and to see strength for these days we are facing. One of the many ways you come to us is through scripture. And for that, we give you thanks. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Well, friends, who would have thought that the circumstances would present themselves when we had inspiration for a sermon series sometime back that we would have to worship over the internet this morning because we couldn't meet together as we do customarily. In these strange times, I remind you of the words that I used to begin the service last week from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, that says, let us not neglect to meet together. And friends, even on the internet, today we find ways to meet together and to live out those words. As we come to our scripture lesson today, we look back at the chapter before in Luke chapter 6 and we see that Jesus had been teaching and we don't know how much time had passed between those stories and the ones we find in the beginning of chapter 7 but we know that as he enters Capernaum today he's probably very tired and he came there to rest and to regroup But what happened to Jesus that day is what always seemed to happen to Jesus. When he was tired, when he needed to rest and regroup, there was a crowd waiting for him. Today is no different. The lesson tells us of a centurion who had a slave who was in pain and close to death. And let me pause and define that word centurion. A centurion was a Roman officer who was in charge of many men, probably at least a hundred. The centurion sent a delegation of Jewish elders who were waiting on Jesus, that crowd who was there to receive him when he came. Jesus was tired, but yet when he saw the need, he forgot about his own needs and he reached out. Now, why didn't the centurion just go and meet Jesus himself? There was terrible tension between the Romans, the Roman soldiers specifically, and the Jews. And he probably was fearful that he would cause a disruption in the gathering of the Jews. But the centurion heard about Jesus, and the faith that he had was that he could heal the slave. So that centurion had the courage to seek healing for someone who was dear to him, even in the tension between the Romans and the Jews. Jesus went with them, and as he neared the house, the centurion sent word saying, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore, I do not presume to come to you. But only speak the word and my servant will be healed. He had the faith that Jesus' actions did not require Jesus' physical presence. But his word and his word alone would bring about the needed healing. Luke tells us that when Jesus heard, he was amazed at the centurion's faith. Now friends, a parenthetical comment here. It's worth noting that only two times in the Gospels do we see Jesus amazed. The first time was when he was rejected in his hometown of Nazareth. There in Mark 6, 6 we read, And he was amazed at their unbelief. So the circumstances in this story today are the polar opposite of what we find in Mark In this story today, it says he was amazed at the genuine faith of the centurion. As the story continues, Jesus turns to the gathered crowd and says in verse 9, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. 
Remember this centurion was a Gentile, not a Jew. Hence the reference to not even in Israel. That's a huge statement. Clearly the faith of this man had a big impact on Jesus. And so that delegation returned to the house where the slave was ill. And we're told in verse 10, they found the slave in good health. Brothers and sisters, how appropriate this lesson is for us today. As we look at the news, the internet, we open the newspaper, and we find that fear has gripped our nation. And if you're like me, you look at the scripture lesson and you say, wow, how appropriate. I picked this scripture lesson weeks ago before I knew about COVID. I'd never heard of COVID One thing we could really learn from this story is the power of love and compassion. Though we don't know for sure, I think we can imagine that the servant probably had been a trusted and devoted member of the centurion staff for many, many years. While he could have basically discarded this man, the centurion didn't need him. He was of no benefit because the man physically couldn't help him. And so while he could have discarded him, he instead chose to seek help. You see, he had the courage to seek healing in what was obviously a fearful time. And that was an act of love and compassion. And through this act of healing, the slave learned about this man named Jesus. You see, my friends, this was also an act of witness to the healing power that Jesus could and did bring. How important in these days is love and compassion and witness. This lesson also reminds me of another story found in the Gospels. The woman who had the courage to seek healing, she had suffered from a hemorrhage for 12 years. And not long ago I preached on that text, but I want you to remember with me today that she just touched the hem of Jesus' garment. And she was made well. She had the faith that she could go do that and never even bother the master. He wouldn't even know. And yet he felt the power go out from him. In the same way, the centurion was so confident that Jesus could heal the slave that he knew Jesus didn't even need to go to his house. That was the strength of Jesus' healing power. If we back up a little bit and see in verses 6 and 7, and Jesus went with them, but he was not far from the house. The centurion sent friends to him saying, Lord, do not trouble yourself. <clears throat> for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore I did not presume to come to you, but only speak the word and let my servant be healed. Only speak the word. Friends, that's a phrase of confidence in the master's touch, just like the woman with the hemorrhage. Confidence that this healing could occur without Jesus' actual touch, without Jesus' actual presence, all because he had the courage to seek healing for his slave. My friends, the centurion was confident in the healing power of Jesus, just like that woman with the hemorrhage. And the reality is, when people have that kind of confidence in the master, miracles can happen. Just a word from the master would be sufficient. Just a touch of the master's garment would release healing power. How can we seek healing today? How can we find the courage to seek healing from our fear, from the COVID virus, from whatever ails us emotionally or physically or spiritually? If we could only hold and, and have that confidence in our hearts today. Knowing that the world is not going to end with this virus. 
This is new. This is unprecedented for sure. But it is not beyond the healing hand of Jesus. In my lifetime, I've never seen such panic and hoarding in grocery stores. In 2007 and 2008, when the market took a horrible dive, I was the chair of our conference board of pensions. When we lost an enormous chunk of our investments that were and are the basis of our clergy retirement plans. I laid awake at night worrying about my brothers and sisters in the clergy. But truly, that was not the best thing I could do. I prayed. That was the best thing I could do. Was that money restored? Well, eventually it was. Will these investments that have been lost in the last week be restored? Eventually, yes. Will health be restored? Yes. Brothers and sisters, we're facing a very similar streak today. Many people are sick. There's an economic downturn. Some have passed away. Panic has ensued. But what I want to say to you today is when we panic, we harm our witness. We're called to be firm in our faith. Even when we are afraid, it is okay to be afraid. It's natural. It's human. But when we panic, when we show the world that we are panicking, we are harming our, our witness. It's natural because of the unprecedented nature of what's happening to be wise, to be cautious. I went into a hospital this week and I wore a mask. I washed my hands so many times, they're very dry. I use so much hand sanitizer, they're very dry. But we have to be cautious, we have to be steady. But we also have to trust in the miraculous healing and steadying power of God. I told someone last night, I, I think God chooses to give us a brain and for us to use that brain in times such as this. Not to be crazy, not to go in, as we've seen the interviews of the students on the beach during spring break, that nothing's going to interrupt their spring break. And there's just thousands upon thousands of kids on spring break who are not taking the necessary precautions. We're called to be wise, but firm in our faith. One of my favorite Bible stories is found in Mark's Gospel. We find Jesus asleep in the stern as the storm siege the disciples' boat. And Mark 4, beginning in verse 37, has these words. A great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and he rebuked the wind and he said, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased. And there was a dead calm. And he said to them, why are you afraid? Have you no faith? And they were filled with great awe. And they said to one another, who then is this? That even the winds and the seas obey him. Friends, our master is the very same one who felt the power go out from him in healing the hemorrhaging woman, the same master who helped heal the centurion slave sight unseen, the same one who was asleep in the stern, calmly trusting God to see them through the storm. And God will see us through this storm. He will encourage us to seek healing from this virus and from anything else that seeks to come against us because we are his children, precious, beloved children. Never doubt it. Thanks be to God. Won't you pray with me? Loving and mighty God, we thank you so much that you seek to bring us calm in the midst of our storm. Forgive us when we panic. 
Forgive us when we overreact. Yes, we need to react. We need to be wise. We need to be diligent. We need to do the things that you call us to do to protect ourselves. But I pray, oh God, that you will be with us as a church family and help us to be a calm in the midst of the storm, to be a beacon of light on the hill. We thank you, oh God, that you are not asleep in the stern, that you are the one who holds each one of us in the palm of your hand. And for that, we give you thanks. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Blair and George will lead us in our closing song. And as we do that, let me invite you at home this morning to be in a time of prayer. That you sing along, but you also think about the things that you can do to make a difference in your neighborhood, on your street, in your office, whatever realm you have, which is very small right now. I want you to give thought to the ways in which God has protected you, the way that God has comforted you, I want you to lift up neighbors who you know are ill or who need assistance. Give us that time, O oh God, during this song to reflect on our relationship with you and what that calls us to do and be.
close our service today, may we claim that, that it is well with our soul, that we trust that the master is with us no matter what is going on in our world, that he walks in front of us, he goes around us, he protects us, he encourages us to be wise, but to be trusting. Thank you, O oh God, for that encouragement, for that strength. Help us to go forth into our communities wisely, safely, but confident of your promise of, of life with us. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.